So, since you know, so my research focuses on the uh, study of the linguistic gaps and the physical mechanisms, and um, as well as the resolution of the black hole where they detected from through the lay observations. And in addition, we don't know here because she's the current representative of the candidates. Yeah. So, the project. All right. Well, thank you for attending. Those are impressions and online. So let me tell you what it's going to be about. Right. So. We all know that PhD is a very busy time in our lives, and the first year students are about to discover that. But so our enemies are the bureaucracy, those from the ministry and the uh, university, mm -hmm. and things are sometimes, of course. And then our best friends is ourselves <laughs> and the manual for PhD, which was created by my predecessor, Laura Hermosa. And I have uh, included some, uh, uploaded and uh, added some things. So you can find this uh, manual right here in the internet. In the, I'm not sure you can see properly because of the uh, thingy. It's right, it's right here in the translation in the third state. So you can just download it. It's the upgraded version. And everything I'm going to say here is mostly going to be there, but I'm also going to add a few things because I've just found out today. So first of all, ministry. So uh, most of you, if not all of you, are either an NPI or an FPU, which is a scholarship contract from the SESI um, or the ministry. And uh, the bureaucracy that you're going to have to face with this is here, all information is in this convocatory, like regarding everything, basically, that you need to know. But the part that, in, that you're interested in right now is right here in justificación. Because what you're going to have to do is to um, seguimiento, which is monitoring kind of uh, process. So you're going to have to upload two documents during your PhD, one in your second year, the other on your final year, which is normally the fourth, but that can be wrong. So in this justificación, you have this uh, justificación científica técnica, which is where you can find the models, the intermediate and the final one. And in this economical one, uh, this is when, when you go away on a, on a stay for a like, long period of time, you can find some model to justify this stay here. But that is when you come back. So we'll get to that later. So the important thing from here is this. You will need a first document of second year monitoring report and another one on the fourth and final year. The most important thing is that this report is not only yours. So there are two reports, one from yourself, one from your supervisor or the IT of your project, which means that you have to fulfill yours and you have to make him or her fulfill theirs. So do not forget about that because when the uh, date is tight, you might want to remind them <laughs> that they have to do it as well and they have to send the document. Right? And um, yeah, regarding the, the stay, which is the this, uh, estancia, right? Uh, don't forget that you have to include it in the final report. So normally the stay you do it on your second or third year. So in the first monitoring report, you don't really include it and you don't need to. But it's really mandatory for the second and final one, right? So this is it for the ministry, uh, FPI, FPU. So not much, but still there. So let's go to the university one. Now this is the fun one. Right. So First of all, you all should have your email from the university, which will give you access to this platform, Acceso Identificado, with your uh, use, user, I think, and some um, password, I think it's like four digits, that you should all have from being in the program. So once you access in here, 
This is where you can find all your information for your PhD, which is the Portal de Seguimiento Académico de los de Campos. Once you click in here, it should appear something like this. So this is me when I was young. <laughs> and uh, right, so first of all, you have some general data, such as uh, some blah, 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 right? But from here, the important thing is first, your program, which is normally either this one, the Physica y Ciencia del Espacio, or the Mathematics and Physics one. So normally those are the most usual ones. And uh, what's really important here is these two people, so other than your thesis director, to the side, your tutor and coordinator. So the coordinator is a person that coordinates the PhD program in which you are involved. And the tutor is supposed to be the person that acts as a link between you and the university. So any questions related to the bureaucracy or your, if your PhD and uh, how to send these kind of uh, papers, you should ask this person. In my case, you can see that it's the same person. So I just email her about everything. Uh, right, so um, this person will come up in conversation later. Another thing about this page, other than the general information and the admission documents, this is just like a repository where all your uh, documents that you will submit will be uh, just in there in case you need them. So not really important at this time. Is the DOD, which stands for Documentos de Actividades del Doctorado. So the activities that you are going to do while in your PhD, which are like seminar, talks, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So once you click in there, it will look like this, okay? So you click and then it will, the problem with this is that it's mostly in Spanish. I don't think there's an English version, but uh, it should be pretty easy to translate anyway. So uh, you can check here, the activities that you are advised to take or participate in. And you can, what you need to do here is every time you do an activity, you create this activity and you uh, just write into it some uh, description and then add the certificate of attendance of this activity. Okay? Uh, yeah, but that should be very different kinds of activities that will be explained uh, in here. So like they've got like different names, like PD something or some kind of names. But you can just go in depth uh, checking these links here. It, it should be pretty straightforward. The problem with this, and I think I mentioned this, well, I mentioned this later, but I'll just mention it now, is that this create activity thing, you can do it for the things that you do, but some activities can, you cannot create yourself. And your tutor, remember that I mentioned this before, this person here has to create the activity and activate the activity, and then you can just upload a PDF or uh, whatever it's required for the activity itself. This is the case, for example, when you have to stay with uh, either locally, like for a few weeks or something, or uh, longer stay for months. So you will need to tell this person, please activate this activity with this name and blah, blah, blah. You just give, give them some uh, like general information and then they will be at the end and then you will be able to upload your stuff. Okay. Right. Second most important part of this is the long investigation. This is... Excuse me, yeah. direction. That's only one question. Yes. Do you have a... Um... An idea of which activity had to be, can you create yourself, or which one had to do the tutor to get a list of them and provide it very useful for the people? Um, yes, I mean, I, I have it on top of my mind. Like, I know I know the, the mandatory ones is the, the stay in abroad yes. thing, and the courses that are done by the university, yes. they have like specific target. And they need to be created by the tutor, as far as I understand. Apart from the concept of university, which other activity can you do? The, the stay, the stay abroad. The stay. Yeah, the stay abroad needs to be created by the tutor. Okay. Or at least that, that's how it was for me. I don't know if, I, if it has changed. I don't think so. But uh, yeah, so those have to be created by the tutor. So I still have doubt about which one I have to do myself as a tutor or which other. You know, okay. to do that. So it would be good if we could clarify. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, send it around. Just okay. so everybody we know. It's all right. That would be very good. All right. Oh, good. Yes. 
are those something in school pleasure? That is a thing that I was going to say later. So technically, you need to do some university activities in order to later defend your PhD, but the sum is very, you know, it's it's not really specified. So my my advice is to while you're in your first and second year, just do some random university activity. Some like one or two courses that don't really take up a lot of your time. And then you can say, hey, I did this. Right. And then they, they can't really but at this point I don't know how much how dumb we can do without this. I, I, I don't know. I, I've never heard of anyone having problems because of this. But then, you know, people. Yes. Maybe by involvement or respect, I remember my first year, uh, Chancellor with the Golden Angel, the other program. Uh, what he said is that when you finish your PhD, that page is basically printed and attached to your CV. I don't know if that's uh, that's the case or for everywhere, or it depends where you go. But for example, I can tell you that if you ask for a job in the uh, see yeah. Uh, it's more important to have the certificates of those activities rather than the than this. Yeah, like, of course. It also you have your diploma and stuff. Yeah, so I, I don't think they're super important. They're just, I mean, they're just, what, what do you do if you go into your thesis defense and then they tell you, well, I checked your activity page. Why don't you have any of the university activities? And then what do you answer? I don't know. So I would suggest you just like do one of, yes. Yeah, I think at the end, before you submit your PhD, we had the tutor. I mean, I'm talking about that. Yeah. We had to send uh, a kind of report. Exactly. How have you have really reached what is effective for you to be uh, or get your the, the degree? So I think it's what we had to do that. And then we had to do that. Yeah, I got really. And a good background, a good training in different subjects, mm -hmm. uh, submitting papers, uh, doing the state abroad, um, attending mm -hmm. other seminars beyond their city subject and so on. So uh, but we had to do that for the end. Uh, but I think all the compulsory things are only the paper, one or yes. two papers. So that, one paper with a bunch of secretary. All the questions, yeah, you just talk to your tutor. I would think so. And uh, say, okay. yeah, that would be useful, that would not be, I mean, I normally try to, yeah. uh, to suggest or to advise on. Yeah, I mean, some of them are kind of useful. useful for you, yeah. right? Because at the end, you will be going to do some activity. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, it's I'm sure you will get a meaning activity for the sure. Now, so, yeah, so it's not necessarily uh, university ones, but there are some useful ones, both from the physics or just some whatever courses that are around that will be useful to you. So, you will just do them and have a certificate. Yes, yes, I remember that. I don't want to do any more seminars than also. Right, so, um, well, thanks for, uh, for that. Next is the, the research plan, the plan of the well, This is a one-time thing, and this is for the first years, right? So you pay attention here just for a second. Uh, what you have to do is that you go in here and you upload your PDF or presentation, and then you have to defend this, right? I'm not sure if it's like, well, I'll, I'll explain it later in, in depth. And uh, this uh, label here is the monitoring thing. So this is where you go every year in September and do your monitoring which is the use element in each year of the of the of the PhD. So this is an every year thing that we have to uh, do. And then finally is the general sort of applying things in case you require some additional extension, for example. I will get to that later, or any other issues. This is the way to communicate that to the program of the PhD. That being said. Yeah, this is what I said. Some of the activities, I will uh, check that in depth later, will have to be activated by your tutor. And uh, if you need an important date, can be fixed. I've been there. It will be a bit painful to contact all people, but uh, you can get there. And 
like I said, technically you need some activities, but not necessarily for the university. So I would advise to just check the PhD program requirements, just in case, if you want to be sure. But mostly, as, as it's been said, it's your tutor and your um, supervisor who will finally decide that you are apt to defend your thesis. And uh, as, um, as I said before, the IEA signals attendance counts as an activity. So in order to have this, uh, first of all, we have an Excel that I sent already, but I will send again if needed to keep track of them. And what you need to do is every September, you make a list of all the seminars that you have attended with the title and the date. You create a document, you send it to Rene. I will, I forgot to add the, the, the email. Seminars are the and, uh, and then he will send you back the document signed, and then you can upload this document as an activity in the DAD. So, for the first year, summary of the, this part, the research plan, which is about a 15 minute presentation. Because of COVID, I had to do it online, but I'm not sure if they were doing it online or in presence in the university. So, take that into account. Uh, the coordinator of your program should contact you in order to decide which dates are suitable for you. But if they don't, you have to do this anyway, right? So you have like, to pay attention that around like, around three, four months since you start your PhD, you will have to do something like this. So if you haven't received anything in that time, I suggest you send an email to them checking that this is going to take place and when is it going to take place. Uh, also, uh, something that uh, came up today, if you have a co-director, you also have to defend why you have a co-director or why you need it. And in case you don't have it, but you will have it later in the in the PhD, you will have to introduce it and you'll have to do some paperwork about it and maybe defend again the research plan in order to introduce this person. Uh, yes. When making the enrollment, we cannot have more than one teacher or supervisor. So the director must be added. Added in the investigation plan, in the research plan, yes, exactly. And then there's no paperwork. Uh, if, I would think so. <laughs> I think so. And uh, yeah, so all the way down the plan de investigación, which is a one-time thing, you do it and that's it. Then, of course, you need to be careful about the monetary report. For the first year, it's not going to be a lot. You're going to make up most of it. But you still have to do it. So just take that into account. Then you will have to do this every year, along with the activities and the enrollment, because there's like a few series of documents. And then the third year, in which I am, and this is important, we need to ask for an extension, because our contract is three plus one. So it's not straightforward four years. So before three months before we end the third year, we need to ask for an extension of one more year to defend our thesis. And the way to do that is using the official identificado and some solicitors, like I said before, when you ask for it. So this is for the third year people. And then we go into the absolute madness that I have discovered that is the fourth year. So it would be really useful if you check this link because it's everything that I have printed. I'm basically adding a lot of text here, which is everything that is on the web page. I don't want to read those, but I, I, I left it here for you to read. So uh, this will, like, doing your thesis turns out it's not the worst part. <laughs> Once you have your thesis done, you have to do a lot of paperwork. So you have to upload a copy of your doctoral thesis in, in this, in a question and difficult, same way that you have the portal de seguimiento, there is another one, which is called the positive thesis. And here you go in there and you have to add a copy of your doctoral thesis, then a commitment of copyright, a proposal regarding the members of the board, one original publication, the summary of doctoral thesis, your CD, and the assignment of the, like, well, not the assignment, the agreement signed by the co-authors, saying that the papers in which you have uh, co-wrote uh, are suitable for the for the PhD and will not be used in any others. That is just a start, by the way. So once you have done all this paperwork, then it's when you can start the process. And no, no questions so far. Uh, so if the thesis is submitted uh, as an article based, which is like 
product videos. So you have like three or more publications and that is for your thesis. There are special requirements that I will not go into uh, right now, but just so you know that we have to pay attention to that. And if you have a digital agreement, then you will also have to check some other stuff. So like I said, just link in here, and I'm just going to go quick a bit. Uh, right, so once you have done all that, this is the procedure. So you will have to wait until this international school of postgraduate studies, postgraduate studies, We'll check their information and then they will tell you if they match your records, if anything is missing, you will have to submit it, and there's a process here. Once you meet the requirements, you will be available, and then you will be allowed to proceed to your doctoral thesis, right? And uh, you will need this authorization, but I think this is just like an automatic process that you will just have to just check that everything's all right. If I'm uh, missing something, please feel free to, to tell me because I haven't really. And uh, other than that, you need to check the management committee, the notifications, the secretary of the board, and the secretary of the other board. So there's a lot of process involved. Like I said, just copy it here. And, but this is to check carefully that you are like on your third year, something like that. So you're ready for it whatever's coming. Right, so now that we have been through the ministry and the university, it's time for a, a, a bureaucracy. So first of all, let me tell you that there is the uh, CSD, which is the Commission de Doctorado, which is a um, uh, new sort of entity that will help monitor the progress of the PhD candidates. And uh, we're basically there to help. We will uh, contact you. I'm a but I have a little here, <laughs> one of the other members as well, please. And uh, we will just uh, try to see that you're doing well, if you have any problems or uh, issues or whatever questions, right? So if you have any uh, concerns during your PhD, feel free to reach out to any of us or to me, and then I can uh, point you to the next member. Right, so first of all, first years, you need to create a classic account. Now, I actually don't remember how I even did this, but I remember going to the human resources to check this out. So you will probably have to go there and create a CESIC account in case you don't have it already, because here is where your pay sheet is. So you're, in case you need your nomina for whatever rent or something, and uh, checking the holidays that you have available and when you can get them. So that is all the information is there. So you will need this account, yes and yes. Also, in this CESIC uh, intranet, you can check the formation courses, which also count as an activities for the PhD that you can submit in the DAD. Uh, they're very interesting courses, sometimes. Uh, also, I discovered recently there are some social benefits or ayudas sociales, just like for people like, for example, me, who need glasses, if you need to change glasses or buy contacts or stuff like that, there are, uh, there's a call for submitting the receipt or the invoice or whatever, and they actually uh, help you get some of that money back. And also, uh, I know that I've never uh, been subject of CESIC and university money for stays or projects. I know they exist. I haven't really uh, applied for any of them. Well, just so you know, um, you can be attentive for that. And then the fun of the administrative tasks that you will have to deal with here in the LEA. So I have basically divided it into three. If I am missing something, please feel free to tell me. Basically, it's going to be the travel stay progresses, which is a whole thing. Then buying the material, like computer, monitors, mouses, keyboards, etc., etc., And the easy one, which is going to be the enrolling payment of the year. Because even if you are... Uh, enrollment is going to be like free. You will have to pay a tax of around 60 something euros and you will have to pay it yourself. You will get the receipt and the two, three documents that justify that. And then you will have to bring those documents here to administration to Susanna. And then she will pay it uh, to you. As far as I understand, that is how it's done. I know some cases in which she has directly paid 
the whole thing, but I don't think that's done anymore. So you have to wait first, and then you get the, the reimbursement. Yes, this is for the, sorry, yeah, thanks for the, this is for the FPI and FPU people, in which your enrollment is included in all that money that you have for your PhD. So uh, other than the, this, which is what I just said, the buying computer and monitor stuff, um, that makes uh, special mention. So computers and monitors, it's a special thing, one that is actually being uh, going on right now. So from now until the 31st of January, then for the uh, first week of May and the first week of September, these are the calls for computers and monitors, which means that outside of these dates, you cannot ask for those, except if they are stolen or they break. Those are exceptions. So uh, this is the call for that. And if it's not a computer or a monitor, then you can just um, do this in the open the company. You go there, you apply for it, you ask for a budget, you select the, the whatever you want, and you ask for it, okay? So uh, yeah, you have to differentiate between these two things, computers and monitors and the rest. That in case you want to borrow stuff. And uh, yeah, I've already mentioned the uh, enrollment payment. I don't think I need to say anything more about this. So, the big thing. <laughs> uh, all of, the, all, all of what I'm going to say is going to be uh, it's the, in, uh, explained in detail in here in the documentation, in this uh, part. But I'm going to go a bit in depth uh, so you can just see the process. So for travels, stays, and congresses. And when I say stays, I mean short term, which is like less than a month stay, right? So whenever you need to do one of these, you need to go into certain bills, and these are the, the ones that you're going to need. The organization of you and the inspection of the congress. So if you have to go to a congress, you will have to submit the inscription at the congress. And then you will have to do another one, which will be the order the servicio, which is for the stay in whatever place that you're going to stay. Okay, so it's like this. The institución al Congreso is just the payment for the Congress itself, not the duration of it. Okay, so like the let's include here. Right. So in order to do, like, imagine you're uh, traveling and you're going to stay one week in Valencia. So, first of all, you need to go through the 14A, which is the Urban de Servicio. So, you go here and you click and you fulfill the whole thing. Then you need to sign it and have your supervisor sign it. So, once you sign it, it is sent to your supervisor, but in case he or she might forget, you need to remind them to sign it because until they sign it, it's not going to be sent to the direction, the dirección. Is it direction? I don't know. And then they are going to do the, si the final signing, and then it's going to be complete. So it has like three signatures, yours, your supervisors, and the uh, director's signature, let's say. Once you have that document signed, you need to get the transport. Now, before that, there's, a, there's an option, which is the 14C, which is uh, the advanced payment. So in case you are short of money, and uh, you need some money in advance, you can also fulfill this document and add it to the 14A. And uh, it works. So that is just a uh, one little thing. Right, so you have your 14A now uh, fulfilled. Now it's time for you to get the transport. The problem is that you need to get the transport first through the travel agency, because we have some sort of thing going on with them. So you need first to do it through them, but that doesn't mean you're going to do it with them. So it's a bit less a trick. So technically, you need to do it through the travel agency, but we'll see. So let's say you get it through the travel agency. If you do it through them, it's like they just send you the tickets and then you're done, you have your tickets and that's fine. The accommodation can be done through the travel agency, but not necessarily. So you can do it on your own. Normally it's less expensive if you do it on your own. That's why everyone just do it, does it on their own. So, um, but yeah, that's why I said advised. 
you need that uh, in both things and proceeds for everything, you tell the hotel or the Airbnb or whatever it is that you're staying, you get your uh, receipt and then you just put it here in the end. Uh, right, so for the accommodation itself, there's a there's what we call a diet. We are diet group two, which means we get a certain amount of money per day for accommodation, and that is a fixed amount. But a fixed amount meaning that you cannot get more than that. You can get less than that. They will just pay you until that amount. So in case you go to a place where the minimum price of a hotel room is more than what they're going to pay you, you can get an additional money. I've never done it, so I don't really know how it goes, but you can ask for it. I think it involves the uh, director and so, but you, you will need to check it out and just know the, that there is a possibility to uh, spend a bit more money than the one that's already established. The money that's already established is from 2002 data and has not been upgraded. So it's a bit tight, around 67-ish per night. So yeah, anyway, so once you have your accommodation paid for, and as you pay it, you save your receipt, and then you will have to bring it later to administration. You save all documents, whatever documents you get, you save it, all those. Especially any sort of invoice, tickets, and boarding passes, save it. Then get a certificate of whatever Congress, talk, seminar, you know it, get a certificate because you will have to bring it back as a, um, as a proof that you were there. And then once you come back, advisedly in less than 10 days, once you come back, you will go to administration. Well, first, you will have to fulfill the 14B, which is the I'm not sure if it's there. I don't see it. Anyway, uh, organ justificativo, you will see it at some point. You fulfill it, it's just kind of very similar to 14A, but like for coming back. That's why it's called 14B. And you fulfill it, and then you go to administration and just give them all the paperwork, all the invoices, all the train tickets, or train tickets, and the accommodation, everything. And that should be it. The problem with this is that I just found out in the junta that from 1st March of this year, this might all change. <laughs> because we're upgrading to some Sorogia thing. I'm not sure what it is, but there might be an upgrade. So I will keep you updated on that the second I understand <laughs> what this is about. Uh, right. So. That is for this part. Yes. 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 Uh, it's more like a word in the first. Sure. You will do some for the Congress. Yes. Uh, you don't have to pay it yourself. That's it. It's a, yes. That is a point. voice or something to for the issue. Exactly. Yeah, that's very good. You pay it yourself. You always uh, well, say yes. Yes. Exactly. Similarly, with uh, doing uh, buying paid tickets or something on your own with a travel agency, uh, you can do that uh, if the travel agency has a certain amount. I have that. But that I have. But the, no, but the Congress thing is it, it's very important. You cannot pay yourself for the Congress fee. You have to get the invoice and have administration pay it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Ron. Yes, only one thing. Yes, it's not only for you. Yeah, this is for everyone. Yeah, this is for everyone. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, everyone suffers the same thing. Yeah, coming up at the point of yes, yes, yeah, no, sure. Lips. The guy that was talking before. Yeah, lips, lips. <laughs> and it's uh, yeah, the conference fees. Yes, the yeah, the separate Yeah, the and lips. And be sure, yeah, you don't have to not too much people now. And the same also for some conference, it's also they act for a NAS taxation. It's the same time. So don't pay for the, I mean, in some of the conferences, some of the meetings, mm -hmm. conferences, we have to pay for something within an abstract. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is. I don't know if any of, of, 
I, I, it hasn't been my case. I didn't know that. It's seen four of those other conferences. Okay. So don't be for that. Okay. You have to be separate. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Uh, right. So there is this beautiful summary picture in the intranet, in the place that I said before, in documents, organized submission. So I just put it here so you know it's here, <laughs> and then you can check it out later. But, you know, there's a process here. Right. So the thing about the travel agency that I said before, so we are mandatory. We need, wait, someone said something? Or was, oh, okay, that's fine. So uh, we need to contact the travel agency in order to buy the tickets for plane, train, bus, whatever. But since they usually, uh, they are more expensive and it takes like super long time to respond, at least within the European Union, if they do not respond in 24 hours, you can email them back and say, I do not want this. And since so you do not respond it, I'm going to take care of my own. Okay, so that, that's the trick. <laughs> it's like, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to take it. So um, in the manual del doctorado, I put the polite way of saying no. But um, <laughs> uh, you, you can check it out later. So that's it. You need to you need to tell them all the information. Like, I want to book this. It's, it, I mean, it's easier if they do it, okay? And if you do this, this, this so with a lot of time, then you can just, you know, take your hands off it and they'll take care of it. But if you're short of money or your project is short of money, then they might increase the prices a lot and you do not like that. So um, just tell them all the information that they need. Like, I want this plane from this time, from this company, uh, or train or bus. And if they do not respond, then you're allowed to uh, buy it yourself. But it's not fast, right? So first you contact them, they will email you back and reply like, your order blah, 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 is being processed. And then it's like, okay. Then you wait 24 hours and then you ask, answer that email back and you say, no, in a polite way. Once you send that, your order will be in process of cancellation, but will not be canceled Right, like right uh, away. Okay, so you have to wait for one or two days. That usually does it. But in case it's not, you just call them because they have a phone number. They know us very well because we're constantly calling them. And then you have to tell them, please cancel this. Uh, uh, you tell them the number of your applications, and then you have to wait until in your application itself it says cancel. Like fully cancelled, no in process, fully cancelled. And then when you have this document, you do two things. First of all, you save that email uh, in which you can see that it has been more than 24 hours. So you can uh, so you just you save that email. The email they sent you and the one who replied back saying no, you save that. And you forward it to administration along with a screenshot of the cancelled application. Okay, so you need, you need to see your name and the cancel thingy and the everything. So everything is correct. And then the administration will say, okay, you do it yourself. And then you just do it yourself and be happy. Okay, so that is the no is no for the, for the travel agency. It's a, it's a bit convoluted, but it's necessary, actually. Especially, yes. I also want another small thing to add. Yes. I mean, if you buy in the bank against on your own, yes. many uh, companies and the uh, rents, even yes. the, the regular one, is yes. uh, paid and uh, separately. And yes. when you uh, the the rent school certificate in us, okay. you may not get that part of the money back. So that's a big reason you should try to lose the agency because yes. they can. Uh, okay, yes, that is, a, that is a big point. I will include it. <laughs> because, yeah. Oh, can you repeat it? I didn't get it this point. Oh. Okay, that means that uh, if you cancel the travel agency and you buy the benefits for yourself, many companies, especially for consumers, 
just to um, another people for that page. Yeah. Even the servers. And when you go to the expresses, and you will probably not get the other one. Okay. So if you do it yourself, you might have to pay for the language yourself. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But if the travel, maybe, yes. But, so if you were to buy the tickets yourself, yes. And do all this stuff, yes. Who is then later paying for the tickets? You do the same, this, this, who's ordering the tickets at the other? Yes. Right? You will get the money back once you come back. Okay. And you, uh, you just uh, imagine it's a, it's a plane. Mm -hmm. You give them the boarding tickets ah. that show that you went on that plane, and then they will send that money back to you. So yeah, I'll, I'll put that. Remind me if I forget, please. Mm -hmm. That would be in the same way I you get it back the hotel. Exactly. The same you, you get the money back after you've come back. Mm -hmm. you manage. To get the company to the travel agency to do their work, you don't have to put that money in the Yeah. So you will need a, an invoice of you paying for the tickets where it appears you know, your uh, identification and the amount you pay, and then which tickets you bought, and then you just give that invoice and the European passes or whatever ticket that it is. Uh, right, so special mention for a stay that was longer than a month. Now, this is particularly important for the FPI PU people because this allows us to have the international mention. Okay? So the international mention needs at least a three-month stay abroad, outside of Spain. Not necessarily at once. You can do it like two months and one month, for example, separately. I'm not sure if you will get some issue because of this separate thing, but as long as you justify it, I think it should be okay. So for this, you will need to do a special kind of thing, which is you're gonna have to follow the same process as a normal stay, like buy the tickets, sign recommendation, fulfill the paperwork, blah, blah, blah. The only difference is that it's gonna be your own project, which means that you will have to activate it first in administration. And it will appear here. Okay, so you have to first activate it, say, please activate my uh, grant project or whatever, which gives you access to that money, which currently I think it's around 6,800, give or take. And uh, then you will be able to use that money for this step. So first you activate it, and once it's activated, it will appear here. Means automatic so you will be your own IP, let's say, and then you can just proceed with the same process. Urban is a review for going there, when the justificativa for coming back. It's the clear that so in case during your stay you have to go to a conference. So um, the only difference is that you first have to activate this project, then you do the same as a normal stay. It's the same order of paperwork. There is nothing different there. The important thing is that. So when you come back, you need an official looking document that justifies the extent of time that you were gone during your stay. And it has to be signed with the date of your last day of work. That is important. Uh, as far as I understand, there was a very complicated process involved in this, but now it's much simpler, which means that you only need a document. There is a model of this in the very initial page that is shown in the ministry. So that is a model in case you want to use that. But as far as I understand, any official document works as long as it has a you know typical stamp of the university or whatever thing and it's signed the last day of your of your work and signals what you did and uh during the period that you did. And you will need this document for the international mention and the for the monetary report for the uh, university and the ministry, but it's just one document, so that should be okay. Uh, right, so I think I am basically. Oh, yes, the, what, why is it for? It's like an extra thing that says that you've been abroad um, for more than three months and you've acquired new skills or knowledge, and it's, it's a thing, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything, 
Like, you don't really have to apply for it. Like, it's, I don't, I don't know how to say, it's just a mention. But I think, and this I have to check, if you do the internet, if you want the international mention, like you want the, the PhD, like doctor, blah, 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 international mention, so. If you want this, you have to defend your PhD in English. Pretty sure of that. If you do not want the international mention, then I think you can do it in Spanish. I think, I'm not 100% sure about this. I remember checking it, but not sure. Uh, yeah. No, not really. Not really. It's just it's it's supposed to be a plus, but it's yeah, it's not really super official, like they will pay you more if you have it. Not really. So some general remarks, and I think I'm finishing here. Uh, we have the pre-doc email link list in case you have any doubts or my office is always open. The manual of the PhD that will be incredibly helpful for you. And the Excel for tracking the seminar's attendance that you should already have. If you have any issues related to your PhD, feel free to contact any member of the CSD, which that will uh, they will contact you at some point, so you will get to know them. Uh, for me, for this. Also, no stealing food. You do not steal food in the cafeteria. We have had some uh, food seeds in the, in the institute. That's part of the drama. <laughs> we don't know who it is. That's the term. Uh, no going to the rooftop. And I'm looking at the audience. <laughs> Please get involved with the LP projects because they are very fun and they really uh, let you uh, promote your work outside of the institute. It's always very good fun and they're very uh, incredibly uh a, a people just working on these. Uh, also, keep your OSID account updated and uh, just keep record of everything you do and the work that you work on, your papers, etc. There's a material room, I don't know if you know this, but there's a, like, I did a film in that well, in which you can get, like, notebooks and papers, pens, uh, even medicine and, uh, and pads. And before doing anything stupid, make sure to ask first, because it might just avoid you a lot of trouble. So I think that's it for me now. Good luck from now on. And just general that, we are going to celebrate some uh, churros with chocolate in the cafeteria next Tuesday at 11. So you're all invited. I will send the announcement during this week, probably today or tomorrow. So, because uh, we will need money to make this happen. This is not free. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. And uh, that's it. That's it all for me. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions now, later, at some point during your life, just contact me about this or ask around. So, that's it. That's it for me. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, a couple of uh, one remark and one advice. Could you go back to the when you submit your PhD in this? When you submit, like the fourth year? I think it, at some point, yeah. you sort of have to give a great line. Yes. To be able to submit it. Yes. One of those. I mean, it's just so sent out because I received it in a very last minute. And Sunday, uh, really same day to me because I have to start being the day to the morning. Uh, yes, so I, I know. It's a big show about two to that. Yeah, it's more bureaucracy, but it's a one one. Yeah. And yeah. the other, this is the remark, mm -hmm. the advice, because I will be back. Okay. So, you know, when the, yeah. So, uh, maybe? Yeah. Or, uh, okay. yeah, at some point there, which when you are out, I mean, already the people who are. Or who in the future, and you want to for me to create a ticket of that, please uh, I think I have to click in one of the ID and it tells you the kind of uh, yes. number of words before it was. Uh, I, I, I think if you put it on the ticket, it's usually down here, or on the menu, and it tells you PDA, you want to, PDA, and this one, blah, blah, blah. And I'm pretty sure that it's here in this button. When you click on it, it will just open all the possibilities that you have. So you say, I submitted the project to a menu. 
So it's called PDA one two one, whatever it is. So that code is really important for me because when I have to build a ticket, I have to build a ticket for that one. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have to be specific about what you want. I think for people who are really very helpful. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I think the uh, play. Yeah, I'm going to very much appreciate Yeah, thank you, Larissa. Yes. And I have a couple of questions. The first one is, do you know the details about the papers you have to publish the first, like, with the normal thesis and with the free paper thesis, which kind of paper? Which kind of, so with the, yes. And also the other one. Okay, I know that. Uh, I think this depends on the PhD program, first of all. So. For my program, last I checked, you need, if you are if you only have one paper, I think it needs to be first author paper or second author, but very well justified. Not sure if the third author would be advisable. And if you have to submit your, um, your thesis via three published articles, as far as I understand, one of them has to be like the previous one, so either first author or second with a very strong point. And the other two, what it says, and I'm quoting here, is like important collaboration. So it's, it's a bit of a gray area around there. I guess if you are, of course, second or third author, it's a given. But if you are, I don't know, maybe you are in a collaboration and maybe it goes like alphabetical order, something like that, then if you justify it and you have some sort of proof that says that you actually really uh, worked on that and you're one of the main authors or something like that, it should be okay. So it's all about justifying your contribution to the to the paper. So that's uh, that's my take. Perfect. And the second question is about the uh, and state without an FDA or an FDA. Do you know anything about that? How can I justify it? Because my group wants to pay my stay abroad. Yeah. But I don't know how that then it's it's like a normal state. Okay. So you go through the same process. If you work more than one month, you're gonna do it that way. But you can do it. What is this? I, I, I think it's normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, I, I, I don't know if for longer stays it's the same thing or not. Uh, regarding the question about the papers, uh, I don't know whether, how to how justify the relevance, but uh, it's also something that you should take into account. There is uh, a link to a document somewhere in the university will send to the desk later when I because for every paper that you want to use for your thesis, no matter if it's the, the one that you are asking for yourself or, or if you want to do a classical thesis or a biocompendium particles, you need to, for every author, every author of the paper, to mm -hmm. sign a waiver saying that they have a lot of authorized that paper being used for your thesis and that yeah. you are not going yeah. to use that paper for any other. Yeah, that is that is in in the in one in one of the many slides about the fourth year, that is one of the requirements. But yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that sense, I think it's one of the I just mentioned it that because I had a problem with that with one of my previous clinic with Manuel Lampo. I think they have to certify that that work had not been included yes. in any other year. And will not be either. So I got a problem because one of the guys that wasn't included, but he didn't want right to find it. Yeah. So, so that, that's something that you. We are collaborators with our collaborators. We don't have any problem, but they say that are they keeping it not to be part of any other yeah. project exactly. outside the, the University of Granada? So, the yeah. Any other yeah, yeah, in, in the world, like it's got to be a unique. Yeah. Okay. Regarding the international mention, mm -hmm. do you know if there is any restrictions while trying to apply for any position outside of Spain, if you don't have? I don't or think I don't know there is no. No, it's I'm not even sure if it's a European recognized thing. And I'm, I'm not even sure. I, I just know that the Spanish government recognizes it as a bonus, mm -hmm. but I don't even know if that goes beyond Spain. Spain so. Okay.
Transparency International. Wait, wait. Check. Okay. And for question regarding when you do the matricula, yes. so then you have to bring the papers back here so that you get paid on CCU. Yes. But for example, for me, I'm not in contact with university because. I paid it in the, the matricula. Okay. Or and um, I knew that that money had to came back to me and I sent them an email. And they told me that because I'm an FPU and it got released uh, not so long ago. Okay. And when it got released like the official um, uh, scholarship, I should send it to them and they would pay me like the the university of Granada. No? University? Yeah. I know, but for FPU. Yeah, so I that so that I might be a difference. Different, or um, you, it's different than that. I am not sure because you're the first one that has ever raised this with me. Okay. I'm gonna. Um, I will talk with you and Gerardo, which is also an FPU student, and I don't know if he's got the same uh, thing because the FPU is it's it's more. Yeah, elite. It's because told me that they would pay that. Yeah. Okay. So there might be a difference then between FPI and FPU yeah. regarding the matricula. Right. Thanks for yeah. thanks for that. Any other questions? Oh, cool. Uh, since there are some questions about the international mention, yeah. I don't really know how relevant, relevant that is. But what I know from some people that did the doctorate, Louis Pauline and maybe in other parts, once you're a doctor, in general, they recognize that you are a doctor everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not such a problem. Maybe with your degree, you have more problems. Like if you're going to another country, they might tell you, uh, no, you want to be a physicist or you want to be, a, I don't know, a chemist. You need to finish these three or four subjects for us to recognize your titles. Like that. But with a doctorate, it's something more. I know people that have, have the doctorate recognized, but not their degree in the same country. Yeah, so basically the important thing is that you finish your thesis and have a doctor. <laughs> International mention might not be all that relevant. So that's it. Just uh, yeah. more than a question is a comment. Okay. Uh, it's just very stupid, um, but this can be from meaning loud. Since you showed the 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 the, um, the yes. page, if you click on the star, it's because I saw it. On the star. What yes. Star? It's something very stupid, but it's convenient. What star? You I have a star right. in the right. Up here. If you if you click I'm in the bottom segment or in the start, you have you will have the post title in the first page every time you enter. Okay, that's it's actually. actually that's <laughs> stupid, but it's, it's actually convenient. You might have known this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Also, if the Votale seeming to disappear at some point during September, one kind of gets usual. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> All right, then um, I think that's it for me. All right, well, thanks everyone <laughs> for your attendance. I'm going to stop this or, yeah, oh, no, then I will take care of it. Yeah, All right, yeah. then I'm going to.